Also, our opening ceremonies with the bagpipes were something really unique, the best I've ever seen. I've never seen it like that. It was really very really touching, moving, and incorporating the memorial for the 911 uh, event. Okay, and the memorial for Mr. Brown and the late Mrs. Elmer Donnelly, some, someone who I didn't know myself personally. Anyway, uh, I want to thank all parties involved with that. Uh, I want to move on to some other notable things. Our ice rink project is completed for the most part. There are probably some border trim things that can go on. But this, it's on the end of the main street where we're on right now, okay? Right down there at Warren, okay? Um, this sort of goes along with part of my philosophy. I spend a few bucks more up front, and it's costly. You save three times or more money down, down the road in the future in adaptability and uses for that parking lot. It'll be an ice rink, accommodation, a lot of things. We can have a tent on there and have a uh, celebration or something, you know, in the future. A lot of things. Anyway, I'm just making sure you're aware that the job's probably completed and they did a beautiful job. Okay. In the community, we've had some asphalt improvement around town that you all should be aware of. Up to Powerhouse Gym, now that's just in back of McDonald's more or less up there. They put in over a hundred thousand square feet of new asphalt, inch and a half cap over the present parking lot. I'm sure Powerhouse Gym didn't pay for it, but I, probably the holding company, I thought it was Betzak, but it may not be anymore, uh, uh, probably paid for that. That's a big load of, of uh, Brand new asphalt, plus line. Okay, also, Mr. Brown at the uh, Brown's Whip Pier. He's put in about 3,000 square feet of asphalt, brand new, plus lines yesterday being Sunday. Okay, and then with the seal coating by Mall's uh, services. All in preparation for his party, which he's throwing for the city. On the 24th, have you seen these flyers? <clears throat> a thank you party for the city of South Lyon by Brown Cook here. Okay, also, you ought to mention the trailer park, South Lyon Woods, being their correct name. They put in another 14,000 square feet of asphalt in the last two weeks in that place. Plus, I believe they've achieved their goal of 25 new trailers be put in there, and some of them are renting out. Uh, but anyway, just letting you know, timeline, they're progressing with their improvements, which we talked about earlier in the year and last year, too. Anyway, I thought you'd like to know some of those updates and good things to know about uh, what's going on in town. Thank you, Bob. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Anyone else?
going to be really helpful to you guys last time. Uh, since Maddie passed, we have literally and figuratively been embraced by our family, friends, and this city. Uh, people who didn't even know, know Maddie, uh, well, and, but maybe who knew us, some of them really just by name, they knew us, uh, have made tremendous gestures of support to us, and they did immediately. The week after Maddie passed, yellow ribbons for Maddie on the streets of South Lyon, uh, placed by people who didn't know. Yellow ribbons worn in the hair of the softball teams at the high schools and on the helmets of the boys' travel baseball teams. Uh, releasing the balloons in Maddie's honor at the East softball game that week. The eighth grade students at Millennium posing in the shape of a hundred foot ribbon outside of the school. Uh, children holding a bake sale in their subdivision to help raise money uh, to help us with expenses. This year, hockey teams at Kensington Valley will be wearing patches on their jerseys. Uh, yellow patches with her name and her number, and it's truly been overwhelming. We will never forget how this community uh, has supported us in this time. But uh, honors such as the one we're receiving today are truly special and that they ensure that Maddie will never be forgotten. And as her parents, that's the greatest fear you have. But these are uh, often reserved for people who've done great things, people who have lived long lives of service to their communities or for their country. And Maddie didn't have a chance to do those great things for her community, obviously, uh, passing at 14. But somehow in her passing, she's helped us all to see how great this community can be. And I believe dedicating this field to Maddie's memory serves as a greater reminder of how wonderful this city and its people can be. You guys have helped show that. And this dedication belongs as much to the people of South Lyon as it does to us. Thank you very much. to do any of the research? Yes. Yeah, regarding just the examples given, I don't know if the permit relevant, whether they can be integrated with our policies or not. Yes, I, I found the Schwartz Creek. Schwartz Creek, um, yeah. I also looked at some of the neighboring communities. I also found the tax bulletin that you referred to here in the reverse mortgage issue. I went back and looked at the state tax commission forms, which, start, which was the starting point for Stephanie. And uh, I've tried to accommodate and make all the changes that are appropriate. There's some, there's some bigger policy questions that uh, I think are giving OCD some pause. For example, if you want to limit the, uh, the, the eligibility for the poverty exemption to three years in consecutive years, or um, if you want to put some type of cap for eligibility and limit it by SEV for the property, those are a lot of larger policy questions that I think we're going to need to bring, uh, get together as a, as a, with the administration, maybe bring those back or, or at least get some input from council um, on what you're interested in, what you really want to accomplish through the uh, poverty exemption guidelines and policy. Well, well, it's clear to me that, you know, 
since I've been working on this, is that there were issues that, when I reviewed the minutes, that some of these policy issues never even came before council. So this is actually a good time to take a look at what other communities are doing with respect to the poverty exception. Uh, whether that particular criteria fits our community, the standards that we're interested in. Um, I'm not so concerned. I don't, I'm not advocating for any of them. I think my broader issue is, is, is that we're being inclusive in our information so that when we make the decision, we've got everything there at the table. Um, I mean, I was very surprised to find some of those areas and uh, I went back into minutes and could not find where the city had even discussed or uh, even thought about some of these exceptions and other communities had. So this has meant more to be more of an instructional kind of process rather than anything. I'm not advocating anything at all, but I like to have as much information available, available to me at the time when we make the decision on policies. Sure. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the motion before us is to table as a non-debatable motion. We're not call debating. for the vote. Pardon? Call for the vote. Vote for what? To table. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm discussing. So. This is a non-debatable motion. Well, well I'm debating it, so.